Hi, it's Dave Robin Astro, and today I am going to replace this Crayford linear focuser that is on my Skywatcher Quattro 150P that I picked up so that I could play with it and do some imaging with a Newtonian, a smaller Newtonian than my 10 inch. But I'm not a real fan of Crayford focusers. They're fine, they're fine in observational telescopes, but they're not so fine on astrophotography telescopes. And this one is specifically an astrophotography telescope, supposedly, but they put an observational, what I consider to be an observational um, focuser on it. And by that, I mean, even though you may have this thing tension, you can easily push the a focuser in. You can tell here I'm not putting much weight on here at all and I'm able to close that. And that's even after playing with adjustments to try to get it as um, as resistive as possible to weight either pulling or pushing. And if you have a heavy image train on this thing you're going to have those kind of issues. You're going to have issues where it is either going to pull out and you're going to lose focus and you'll be constantly trying to refocus as you're taking your images. Or if you have your image trained with your focuser sitting up above, then the gravity is going to slowly um, push that down into the focuser body here itself. And so I was looking for a replacement and there's not very many options. There's a couple options that are available to you out on eBay. And I thought for grins and giggles, because I had already used this company, CMYK, uh, to get the, um, my secondary uh, spider vein. Uh, so that it's nice and sturdy and with a uh, primary mirror mask that I figured that I would go with their focuser. And their focuser, it's very colorful, but uh, here it is. It's here in this box. And let me just unpack it right quickly for you. So the first thing you notice here are the rings. And this is the ring that's going to fit down into um, this one right here and here are three screws which are the primary screws which will fit into these large spaces right here and then just going to reuse these grub screw screws from the smaller one here to go into the smaller holes here but the focuser itself it's a rack and pinion focuser, which is what I wanted. If I'm going to have a heavy image train, which sometimes, you know, I've got a camera with a filter wheel and see filter wheel, a rotator, uh, that tends to be a little bit on the heavy side. And the camera that I have or the cameras that I tend to use are the IMX uh, 571 style cameras, so they tend to be a little bit on the large side. And so, they tend to be a little bit on the heavy. So here is CYCK, sorry, I said CM. I, I, I was thinking printing. Um, CYCK filter, and I was really curious about this thing because I saw this and I thought it was kind of hokey. Um, but it's a compression that allows you to put your two inch filters, I mean your two inch um, coma corrector right on in. It's a nice, um, it's a nice plug there. But this blue thing here, it comes off, which I think is pretty nice. So you can put on any other kind of setup that you might have. So if you've got a triple compression or if you just want to screw directly in, of course I'm using a coma corrector and 
so the coma corrector has to sit inside so that's really not an option for a screw on not like it would be on a refractor where I could screw my image train right onto the end of the focuser but construction of this thing it's seems like it's fairly substantial it's 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 kind of pretty it feels rather smooth I don't feel any issues and again it goes out to about um, 30 35 centimeter uh, draw here which is pretty much what I've got on my existing focuser right there and what's nice is that it's black and so there's very little chance of potential reflection the inside of the tube here is really nice and dark black it's like a very black matte finish in there it does come with a built-in rotator so you can unscrew and you can rotate i believe I'm just trying this thing out for the first time, so I don't know. I'm assuming that we can rotate, and yes, we can. We can rotate, and it has markings on it, um, and it also has degree markings. So if you want to consistently hit the same degree marking, you'll be able to do that, and then you can just tighten it right on down, and it pretty much locks, and then there's two more back here so you can really kind of lock it down so there are actually three um, three screws here which you can use to lock that rotator down so it's pretty much good to go there it's not going to go anywhere and then if you want to tighten tighten pr pressure on the draw tube here to get it even more stiff, you're able to. You have um, a screw here which allows you to basically adjust the stiffness. And there are two others here, which I'm assuming also allow you to do stiffness. Yep, yeah. they allow you. So it's basically three points here, three compression points. If you need to stiffen this draw, so I'd say it's fairly well constructed. It comes with a 10 to 1, like most focusers do these days. It comes with a 10 to 1. And it comes with three holes here. So you can easily mount your EAF onto this thing. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to replacing my Skywatcher with this particular guy so to do that let's go in here and just removing the screw here so i can get access to the focuser here because i'm going to need uh, da -da -da -da. good lord that's a long one okay it's a smaller hex. So there are three hex bolts which hold the, the focuser um, into the focus body itself, the focus draw tube and all that into the focus um, body itself, which makes it kind of nice to replace you don't replace the whole focuser you, you use the same base the same focuser base you just replace this part of the focuser which makes it kind of nice so and there we go so this comes right on out and what i have to do next is take out these little grub screws. Now they're the next size up.
There we go. And I'm going to have to reuse these scrub screws. There's little, just so that you can see what I'm doing, there are little grub screws right there, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm removing because I'm going to reuse these grub screws in this ring. So I'll just speed through this particular part. Okay, the grub screws take a number two uh, metric Allen wrench and the screws to remove the um, focus of hair off of the base here take a 2.5 size Allen wrench just so that you have those in case you're going to do this yourself. And these screws, of course, don't take a three, uh, a two. They probably take a three. Yes, these these ones that come with the new focuser ring here take a size three Allen metric wrench. And you'll notice here. I'll try to see if I can do this without losing them. You'll notice here that there are three little black rubber grommet rings, and those are to cushion and to allow you to be able to do the tilt and the adjustments like so with the focuser when it comes time to actually do the focuser adjustments. So I'm gonna slide this guy right on on and put these guys in. Now there's no instructions that come with this, so you just kinda have to figure it out. I'm sure there might be something online. I'm not 100% sure. I need the three. I'm not 100% sure. We shall see. But there is a um, the screws here. This is kind of like a push pull in, in order to adjust the tilt on your focuser. Um, but the holes are inset because if you notice these screws have a head to them um, and the focuser ring here itself is or the tilt adjusting ring here is inset and so the screws here come nice and flat there now when you're doing this you want to be careful because your secondary is right there and so you want to be careful that you don't drop anything in there and accidentally ruin your secondary because that would make for a really not so good day. And get this thing in. Like I say, these things are push-pull. So when it comes time to actually focus or play with a tilt, there we go. We'll have to adjust both sides. So again, with a new ring on, you're gonna need a number three Allen wrench and a 2.5 Allen wrench for the grub screws. So now comes the focuser. This thing should just screw right on. Of course, finding the right screw. It's harder than it looks to screw on because this thing is unbalanced in terms of weight. <laughs> and so it generally tends to screw want that fairly tight. And now we can go ahead and we can adjust. You can adjust where you, where you want your focuser at based upon the, uh, the degrees here. So... That looks pretty tight, so that looks good. So I could have it this way if I wanted to, or I can have it hanging out this way if I wanted my EIF here, 
or if I wanted my EAF here, but you can adjust this thing in any rotation that you want. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. But there we go. So that was pretty straightforward. Now, the next step that I'm going to have to do, and I, I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm going to have to adjust for the tilt here. And to do that, um, I'm going to need um, some time because that will be a process to do that. And maybe I'll do a quick video of adjusting the tilt on this thing. So if you found any of this to be interesting, please feel free to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. And if you like this video, hit the like button. Until next time, clear skies and happy guiding.